Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of How'd They Do That? I'm Mark Wallace. Well, every single week when we release a new episode of How'd They Do That? We get comments and emails that ask the same question. We've seen it from a lot of different people. And the question is, how do you do how'd they do that? And so that's what we're gonna talk about this week. Well, the most common question we get is, how do we do the interviews? Is it real time or do we send out the questions in advance? How do I talk to these uh, photographers that are on location? The answer is we actually do everything in real time. But before I get there, let me talk to you about the production process. We have a pre-production process, a shoot process, and a post-production process. All of that is handled by our producer. Her name is Kelsey Hazelwood. Now without Kelsey, we'd be in a lot of trouble because she keeps the trains running on schedule. So what she does is she calls every photographer when we have them scheduled. She walks through uh, what the, the interview is going to be like. She talks about the file formats that they need to have for their cameras and the lighting and all kinds of things. Before the shoot, we always go through Kelsey and myself and we look at all of the photos that a photographer has taken or the videos that a videographer has shot and we decide what kind of questions we need to ask and sort of prep ourselves before the interview. She takes all that stuff and gets it to the photographer or videographer. Now once the videographer is ready to go, well, we require all of those people to have their own video camera and a camera operator. Most have a video camera, but most are camera operators themselves, and so they turn the cameras on to themselves. It's sort of funny seeing them get everything situated before we start. In fact, here's a couple of those uh, photographers turning the cameras on themselves, and so you can see what we see, but you don't see every week. Okay, ready when you are? And I'm ready. Here we go. All right, I got that. I'm running external audio just in case our cell phone walks over the camera a little bit. Oh, perfect. Some, that'll happen sometimes. Okay, now that's a lot of fun. Once they have their camera set up, what we do is uh, our audio is pretty low tech. We actually just use a normal phone and we put it on speakerphone and then I will put my phone just out of the frame, usually on a ladder, and I ask the photographers to do the same. Now what happens is uh, we just use that speakerphone, so I talk pretty loud in the studio and the photographer can hear me over their speakerphone. As soon as I'm done asking the question, well, they respond and it's all in real time. So here's a quick look at an interview we did with David Bean, and this is what you normally see. But before we start, let me tell you a little bit about David. David is a lifestyle and celebrity photographer. He's shot people like Taylor Swift, Brad Paisley, of course, Leanne Rimes, Ja Rule, and supermodel Nikki Taylor. Well, welcome to the show, David. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Now here's that exact same clip from our point of view. What we're doing is I ask the question and then I'm just listening and vice versa. So here's that exact same clip looking at it with the audio and video swapped. Now sometimes the speakerphone doesn't work and the person I'm interviewing can't hear what I have to say so they just hold the phone to the ear and then once I'm done talking they'll put it down out of the screen and respond. That's what Jason Wallace did. In fact here's a clip of Jason Wallace and here's something that happens a lot when we're doing the interviews. Um, sometimes the person I'm interviewing cracks up or I crack up or we flub up our lines but here's a scene of Jason Wallace when Taylor Robinson his videographer uh, made him laugh. It's sort of a funny clip so here's a look at Jason Wallace. Hey, thanks for having me on. <laughs> Sorry, Taylor laughed in my shot. I can't be in here. Hold on. Hold on. Let me try it one more time. Okay. Okay. 
All right, now once we get through all of that fun stuff, we've done our pre-interview, we've talked to the photographer or videographer, we got all of our clips ready to go. Um, we normally just edit stuff, but sometimes when we think the cameras are off or right before we start doing the interview, we get little bits of nug uh, nuggets of wisdom that don't always make it to the show. In fact, we didn't know about uh, one of the limitations of the 5D Mark II, and right before we started filming David Bean, he talked to us about it. So here's something we learned from David Bean that was left out of the episode. Um, the only thing I've noticed, I mean, I haven't shot video with this thing a lot, but I know that um, it only lets you shoot in four gig chunks, which is approximately 12 minutes. So we should probably try to make sure that at like a 10 minute mark we stop and I re-record it. Okay, no problem. We've got that timer going. Okay. Now, sometimes we also get pretty funny nuggets of wisdom. Uh, in fact, we learned about DSLR slate from Ab Cisse when he was uh, just sort of going off on uh, Photoshop and photography not being real, and he just bought this app and he wanted to show it to us. So here's a really funny clip of Ab Cisse, and it was something that we learned from, but we laughed at as well. And that was going to be a short answer, but then I decided to add uh, that piece at the end. I hope you can cut that part out. This is not reality, this is photography. That's why we take pictures, because it's not real. Well, Photoshop makes it not real. It is real, but then you use Photoshop and it makes it not real. And Mark, you should also talk about this app. It's called, I'll email you what it's called, but it's a really cool app, and maybe it actually will work for something you guys are doing right now. I haven't found a reason to use it, so I'm justifying my purchase by using it for this. And it's still slightly inappropriate, but it's working. Okay, well that's Ab, he's a nut, I love him. Um, well, once we have all of the interviews finished, we have to get all of the files. We have to get the files of the actual still photos, and we have to get the video footage. The way we do that is we ask our photographers to send those to us via their FTP site, or if they don't have an FTP site, we have a service called Mediafire that we really love. It allows uh, people to upload files up to two gigabytes, and so those come to us. And then if the interview is a little bit longer, or we have a lot of file footage, or the internet connection isn't very good, well, those photographers will just send us their files on a DVD, and then we'll take that. Now, the photographers that we interview, some of them have high-end Panasonic cameras, some of them has, have 5D Mark II, some of them have flip videos, and some even webcams. And so we have all kinds of file footage that we work with, and the way that we convert that file footage to something that we can use is using Final Cut Pro's compressor. So we take anything that we get and we convert that to Apple ProRes 422, and that allows us to seamlessly integrate footage that we get from anybody to the footage that we shoot here on location. Now once that's done, Leon Trujillo, who is our videographer and editor, takes all of the footage, both ours and the footage we got from the photographer or videographer, and puts that into a timeline in Final Cut Studio, and then edits everything. Once the final edit is finished and we have all the graphics and everything loaded up, he compresses the final video and gets it ready for YouTube and iTunes and Vimeo and all the places that we put how they do that. He does that using compressor and an H.264 compression format, and then it goes out to the world. And that's how we do how they do that. Well, remember, if you would like to see somebody that's a favorite photographer of yours on how they do that, you can send your suggestions to me at askmark at adorama.com. And as always, we have all of our past episodes of how they do that at the Adorama Learning Center, including tons of articles that relate to the videos that you've seen. So please check out the Learning Center. It's well worth your time. Well, thanks for joining me this week, and I'll see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.